Hi, welcome back. This is Excel Video 101. I'm Nate Moore. Today we're going to talk more about this monthly bill charges thing. Remember we had a trend last time and what I want to do this time is kind of start where we left off. Let's go to the layout and analysis tabs. I want a trend line. I'm going to go to more options and the trend line options linear is good. Trend line name, I'm not going to worry too much about that. But what I want to do is I want to forecast three periods forward. Now, let's just talk briefly about forecast before we got too far into this. Now, first off, why would you ever want to forecast a medical practice? I think there are probably a couple of things you may do. If you are uh, storing some kind of inventory, whether it's lab supplies or clinic supplies or something like that, something where you've got to figure out, okay, how many of these am I going to need over the next month or two months or, or year or however long, forecasting the procedures that you're going to do that are going to require that inventory amount may be helpful. Maybe it's staffing levels. Maybe it's uh, how many new physicians are we going to need over time or full-time equivalents for each new physician. I think there are a variety of ways that um, forecasting down the road may be helpful for you. And as we look at forecasts, the other thing I'd say just briefly is uh, when you're forecasting, obviously the, the more near term, the, the forecasts that are closer to the current period are going to be a lot more accurate than future stuff is. If you're trying to forecast the next three months, you're going to do a lot better than the next three years. Uh, as you'd look at forecasts, another thing you may want to do is rather than forecast every day's worth of collections or bill charges or whatever, if you aggregate things to your forecasting by month or even by year, you're going to be more accurate than a day-to-day -day swing. And the other thing you may want to say is rather than forecast, you know, 99203, what you may want to do is forecast new patient visits and that's going to be more accurate than trying to get down to the fine detail. So with just some brief comments about forecasting, let's see how Excel does it. There's my forecast and it says, all right, based on history, we think you're going to be there in January, there in February, and there in March. And the honest truth is, that doesn't help me a whole lot because, you know, I really don't know what that level is. There's no way to like scan over it or click it or highlight and say, well, where is January, February, or March 2011? So there's my history. What do I do? What I want to show you is if you're going to chart that and kind of project out, Excel has a bunch of forecasting tools built into it, and that's where I want to spend uh, some time today. What, let's start with what we, what we have. This piece here is simply what we charted up above. I just copied and pasted it down here so we could play with it. And then when I put just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 12. So I've got 12 periods, and I've got some data up here. From uh, the good old algebra days, you remember y equals mx plus b. y is, in our case, the dollar amount, and x is the months. m remembers the slope, or how much does it change, how much does it change every month. And b is the y-intercept, or where does this chart or this forecast go across the y-axis there. With that, there's um, three different ways that we can forecast this information. There's a forecast function, y equals mx plus b, and a trend function. I'm going to do the forecast function today, then we'll come back and we'll worry about these calculations here that are up in here, and y equals mx plus b, and this trend is an array formula that we'll come back to next time. So, what the forecast function that I have here says is, I want to forecast A25, and the, the period that I'm going to use to forecast, first I'm going to do the Y axis, which is the dollar amount, C25 to C36, that's right here. And then the last piece is A25 to A36, that's the months that I'm forecasting, 1 through 12. If you've never played with this function arguments here, what it will do is it will, maybe I'll put it down here so you can see it, and then we'll drag it around. What it does is says you're using the forecast function, and there are three uh, parameters or three variables you need to do. There's the first one separated by a comma, and there's the second one separated by a comma, and there's the third. What function arguments does is it just breaks it down. So instead of separating by a comma, it helps you see the pieces here. And when you do, you can see, all right, x25 is, or x is a25, and that's right there. The known y's are there, and the known x's are these cells a down through that 12, A25 to A36, and it'll even give you help along the way. X is the data point you want to predict. 
this is the dependent array of, and this is the independent array of numeric data. And so with that, it will tell you what the formula result goes along the way. So you say, well, what on earth is that 1163025? What's that 1.1 million number? What it is, is it's that number right there that Excel's using to forecast the January amount. And you want to know what March is? Well, it's going to be, it looks like it's a little bit above that 1.2 line. And sure enough, there it is, a little bit above 1.203. And all the forecast formula does, it says, all right, what period am I on? I'm on period three. And I'm looking at the very same thing. See, I've locked them in with dollar signs, C25, C36, A25, A36. By doing that all the way along, I can tell you what the values are on my forecast line all the way out to December. And now I can also tell you what it's going to forecast for January, February, and March. And all I did here was I didn't need January, February, and March data here. And I didn't need this data because I don't know it. This is future data that I won't know. So I just rolled this out 13, 14, 15. And all the formula says is, okay, take A37, which is that period 13, forecast based on what the y-axis was from C25 to C36 and what the x-axis was from A25 to A36. And you can roll this formula out as far as you want as long as you keep these going. Oops. Got to convince this thing to count for me. As far as you want. That's what I wanted to show you about how this forecast function works. Forecast is one way to get these numbers. Clearly, there's two other ways to get the very same numbers. I'll show you how those two work next time. Thanks for watching.